Okay, thank you so much, Jennifer. And thank you to those who are in the room, um, in that room over there, <laughs> and in the internet room, uh, those right now, and perhaps those who will be watching at a, at a later time. It's great to be here. Um, I am uh, very, very happy to be back. Uh, thank you so much to the Dallas Fort Worth Library for having me back. Libraries are definitely happy places for me, as I'm sure they are for everyone who's here. Uh, so thank you so much for, for creating these kinds of spaces and events and, and having authors um of you know emerging and superstars and everything in between it's great to be part of that community so time is going to go fast today it always does in these sorts of seminars at least in my experience um there's probably going to be more than we can do in the 90 minutes or so we have together but the good news is whatever we don't do together you can then do on your own and because this is all about creating a writing practice and finding inspiration. That's good. It's good to have a little bit of a, a leftover or spillover, if you will, to take into perhaps tonight or tomorrow or the next years or who knows the rest of your life. Uh, you never know what's going to happen. So this uh, seminar is, it's going to offer insight into how to cultivate a writing practice if you don't already have one. If you do have one, but just need a, a refresher or some new ideas, then that will also be there for you. And we're also going to talk about how to find inspiration, maybe share some ideas on that as well as uh, we'll be stopping throughout the time together to do a little bit of writing. So generative writing together. And there is no wrong way to do that. The, the only wrong way uh, would be if you write nothing, but I can't see what you're doing. So either way, I won't know, but nobody's gonna see it but you. So I would highly suggest that even if you don't know what to write, just write, I don't know what to write and something will, will happen. That's, that's usually how it works. So we are going to uh, understand more the ways of becoming a creative writer, how to cultivate a writing practice that works for you. There's not one size fits all here. There'll be, as I said, guided prompts, as well as some sample readings and hopefully some feedback. And then you, I hope, that by the end of our time, you will also have a writing habit. You can set a goal for a writing habit that you will look forward to each day. Okay, so before we get into more of the talking and listening, we're going to listen, but more to ourselves. And I want to ask all of you today, tonight, some questions about writing. So your writing practice. Uh, I would ask you to just please keep an open mind and don't hold back as these answers are just for you, but it's a good way to start, to start tonight of just where, where am I, where do I want to go, uh, we don't, we can't really know where we want to go if we don't know where we are, that kind of sounds Yoda-ish, but it's true. So because writing, I believe writing is a choice. So we we choose to write just like everything except the necessities, right? We have, we have to eat, we have to breathe, sleep, all these things. We don't have to write, we choose it. So it's, it's something that we have to choose every single day, every time we sit down to write. And the way that we make it a practice is choosing to do it as much as possible, as much as is possible in your current life, your situation. And also not giving into the myth, which I believe for many, many years, that we can only write, we can only create when we feel like it, because that is a, an uphill battle, uh, to, to put it in a, in a nutshell. So the first door that I'm going to give you, so instead of prompts, I like to call them doors, and that's something that I absolutely stole from Rebecca Solnit, 
who's one of my favorite authors, she talked often about the, the writer's job is to open doors into the unknown. So I really like that idea uh, for all of, you know, any questions or prompts having to do with writing, not prompts, but doors. So I'm going to post some questions in the chat and we'll just uh, answer these uh, in a notebook, preferably if you want your computer that also works, but super important that you write it down. And this is just going to be how we start off this uh, session today. And they're fairly simple, or maybe they're not. I don't know. I, I shouldn't assume what's simple and what's not. But the first question is, why do you want to write? What is it about writing that drives you to do it? Why are you here? Uh, the second one is, what has stopped you in the past? Maybe fear, maybe no time. Um, whatever that is for you. And the third question is what drives you to write now? So maybe maybe that's a little bit, could have some overlap with number one, but why do you want to write now? Why are you here right now? And then the final question, why will you make the choice to write now, tomorrow, and beyond? So is this something you want to cultivate for the rest of your life? Something maybe you're just trying out, let's see how it works. Be as honest as you can, um, and we'll do that for, for just a couple of minutes or so. And then uh, if anyone has questions or wants to share, uh, feel free to put that in the chat um, or ask Jennifer, and then she can ask me. So we'll take just a couple of minutes here to answer those questions. Okay, I see a lot of great answers so far. And thank you for those who are sharing with the group. I appreciate your uh, vulnerability and, and bravery. And also remember to, to keep it to yourself too, so you can remind yourself as, the, as, as time goes. And I'm also gonna share my answers and then maybe we can uh, read some of them out loud as well. So let's take a, just another minute or so to wrap up wherever, wherever you are. All right, and I'm just going to share share some of these. So um, Amy said that I feel like writing stories and analysis is the only thing I'm good at. I feel like I've been a failure at everything else. Well, I don't know you, Amy, but if you're great at writing stories and analysis, then you're, you're ahead of the curve. But I can definitely relate. Um, I feel like I was put on this earth for, for stories, absolutely. Um, and then he said, what has stopped me in the past is being overwhelmed by laziness and the possibility of doing other things like schoolwork and such. <laughs> overwhelmed by laziness, that's a great way to put it. Schoolwork, definitely, I have been there. Um, Duchess DJ said, I want to give something back for why, why they want to write. Uh, and then what has stopped you, my experience, and who am I to write and share? It sounds like some uh, imposter syndrome, which I have also felt myself. And then Amy said, I write now because I know people really like my work. I've yet to find anyone that doesn't. And my dream job involves being a show writer and writing out these ideas I have in my mind. Uh, awesome. Duchess said, I feel called to write now. So I'm giving this a shot and I'm liking this writing and I've always journaled. Um, and then I shared, I write to connect with others. Uh, my What stopped me in the past is fear of not being good enough, which is imposter syndrome, absolutely. Uh, I want to write to share my thoughts and ideas and creativity and make a career out of writing. And I will keep writing, have kept writing, because I can't imagine my life without words, both reading and writing them. So thank you everyone uh, for sharing. Definitely see some overlap there. And the first, a big hurdle to creating a writing practice and then sticking to it is, is the showing up, showing up when you can to write and reminding yourself why you want to. And then also doing things like this, being in community and hearing other writers talk about why they're doing it can uh, help to, to motivate us. Um, so I'm going to share my screen now. We're going to continue on talking, uh, focusing on the writing practice side before we get into the inspiration side. 
which they go hand in hand. So let me share my screen here in case people find it easier to read along with me. Um, so thinking about how to create a writing practice, we've done the first step is first, why, why do we even want to do this? That's, that's important to know and be clear about. And then also perhaps know what our Achilles heels may be so we can, if not completely conquer, get over them, know how to manage them a little bit better. So the first thing I like to say, or when we're thinking about writing practices and habits, is that uh, a lot of people talk about this magic number 21, three weeks, as in it takes 21 days to form a habit, such as a writing practice just three weeks and you'll have it like that. But it is just another myth. So the truth is that every writer is different and every person is different. Some of us are pretty good at time management, discipline and deadlines, and some of us aren't. But I do think we can all improve the more we have the right intentions and actions in place. So those are the keywords. What's your intention? And then what are you gonna do? So it's not enough to think it, write it. We have to then do things. Uh, in other words, I just said that we need to write down a schedule and goals, but you can't stop there. You have to also follow through and take action. And that's beyond just writing. I think there's more than just pen to paper, fingers to the keyboard. So for me, what works best is having times of day to write that I show up to consistently, i.e. three to five times per week, if possible. So this may take some trial and error, but I think it's good for all of us to figure out when you work best. Is it the early morning? Is it the afternoon? Is it night, before work, after work, weekends? For me, my sweet spot seems to be before lunch and before looking at my phone or emails. And then again, from 5 to 7 p.m., thanks to, I used to have a writing circle. Right now, we're, we're on a break. But if I do bring it back, I will uh, let you all know. And then I also try to write on the weekends after, usually after doing something outdoors or yoga, anything that activates my parasympathetic nerve. And uh, to give you an example of what uh, another writer said about schedules, this is from Kurt Vonnegut. He once said that I get up at 7.30 and work four hours a day, nine to 12 in the morning, five to six in the evening. Businessmen would achieve better results if they studied human metabolism. No one works well eight hours a day. No one ought to work more than four hours. So that was from the Boston Globe magazine. And I'll put the link in the chat if, if you want to read some more of his writing advice. But again, that's one person. So for him, four hours a day, that's, that's a lot of time. Most people I know can't write four hours a day, especially if you have a full-time job. And even if you don't, that's still a lot of writing time. So that's one example. But I think he has also a good point of this idea that, you know, if you're not writing full time, like a full time job, eight hours a day, 40 hours a week, you're never going to make it or that that's the right way. Mm, not necessarily, I would dare to say not at all. Um, I do think that for a lot of people, myself included, writing after work is pretty hard. So I would suggest, if you can, waking up earlier and doing it before work. So if you already do that, if you're a morning person, early morning person, that's great. Um, I'm not. So it took me a while to, to do this, to be okay with it and, and not choose to, to sleep later. Um, but it's also really great if you live with people, because as they sleep, you can get the thing done and have that precious quiet time. So even 30 minutes a day makes a difference. Maybe it's 15 hours in the morning, sorry, 15 minutes, and then 15 minutes at night. That's still 30 days. That's still more than nothing. I also think that if you can't get up earlier, then you can try and write in those moments during the day when you have small breaks, such as during your commute. Of course, if you take public transportation, not when you're driving. Although some people, some tips, some people will 
talk to themselves and use the voice memo, which is technically writing. You can transcribe it later, or there are even programs that will do it for you. So that's another workaround. Uh, or you can do it on your lunch break or your coffee break. If you're working at home, like I am currently, then you can still take that lunch break and use it to do some of your writing or you can go to another room, go to a cafe, go outside. I've even written in my car just to have a space where I'm alone. Um, just like forming the habit of when I eat, I write, or when I travel, I write. It will start to feel like second nature eventually. So that's, that's a tip I would give. If you don't have a writing practice, you can't wake up early, you can't write when you get home, Try to take small breaks throughout the entire day where you write. I know writers who write 10 minutes at in 10 minute chunks. And I think that's something that most of us can at least try to do. Uh, another thing that works for the writing practice is turning off the phone. So I am really serious about this one. And I noticed the difference that when I'm trying to write, if I have it, even in the room, I feel distracted. So if you can, I would say, put it in another room, put it on airplane mode, turn it off. And it really does wonders for creativity. Another thing that helps to create that writing practice and make it something that is valuable and sacred is turning off the internet if you are writing on a laptop. So that can be just for 20 or 30 minutes, but it helps to avoid those quick little social media checks or shopping or looking at the weather that takes us out of the writing zone. So thinking about the writing practice, it's writing and it's getting into a certain mental space, into a creative zone. And anything that takes you out, you should try to eliminate. So for me, sometimes that's the internet Sometimes we need to do research and that's fine. But what I sometimes do is first half hour, no internet, and then I can turn it on and look up whatever I need to look up. Um, another thing, if you do want to try writing when you come home from work or you think you can do that, it's not that hard or, you know, it's worth a, a try. Um, if you're tired or you're drained, I'd say try, if you can, taking a short walk. So getting a little bit of fresh air, sweating, and then going straight from that to the computer or notebook, no phone, is a really good way to tap into the flow state and just let go of the day that you just came from. Uh, another thing, if you can't get outside, if it's, you know, mobility maybe is a challenge, breathing. It seems so simple, but it really makes a difference. And it is uh, the four, four, five technique, uh, breathing technique, where you inhale for four, hold for four, and then exhale for five. Or you can listen to a guided meditation. So one, another source that I will share uh, when I, when we get back into the chat is I found a meditation that is specifically for writers. So if you've never meditated, you don't even really understand what that's about. It's guided and it is only five minutes and it talks about inspiration and creativity. And these are just, again, some of these are just little tricks to help make this a practice and a time that is for you and creativity. Another thing I do to help uh, keep the production up and not get distracted is read. So if I'm not in the mood to write or if I'm upset or stressed, I will reach for a book. So this allows my brain and my body to relax and I will usually get inspired by a great line or an image and then I'm ready to go. And I have, I do have a list on Bookshop of my books if you need recs and I can also put some of that in the chat later. Uh, another way to create a practice is just really treating it seriously and putting it into your calendar as you would a doctor's appointment or a lunch date or a meeting. You can schedule in your writing time and get those reminders so that you know, okay, from 7 a.m. to 7.30, that's writing time and I got to go. 
And you can share that with your friends, your family, and let them know as well, this is really important to me. And I'm going to be doing that for this amount of time. Um, for the writing practice, I think writing rituals are really important. I didn't used to do this, but I do now, and I think it makes a big difference. So they help to set the mood, get into the flow state, and treat writing as a sacred activity. And when I use the word sacred, I don't really necessarily mean it as uh, anything religious, but mm -hmm. sacred insofar as it's important to you. It is a priority for you, and it's a large part of your life. And that means that it, it deserves time and care and reverence. So for example, something I do when I'm getting ready to write mm -hmm. is make a cup of tea, uh, light a candle. Uh, sometimes I write down my goals in my current notebook. Okay, here's what I want to do for today or for this week. Um, and then the meditating as well sometimes helps to just think about what I'm working on or, or try and think about nothing, um, which is really difficult. So I'm going to pause there and see if anyone has any questions on the writing practice aspect uh, before we move into more inspiration. Although I will say there is, like I said, there is overlap between inspiration and the writing practice. I get a ton of inspiration from um, reading, of course, being outside. Um, but I just want to make sure we, uh, if anyone wants to ask a question or suggest anything, um, to let us know. So Megan said uh, she has a habit of switching to Facebook, even though I don't need to. Yeah, it's amazing. I feel like when I write a lot of times, I'm working against myself. There's the creative side that really wants to be in it. And then there's the side that is just a five-year-old that wants to do everything else. And I have to trick the five-year-old into being busy with something else or just taking away, taking away the toys, the Facebook, the weather, the shopping, whatever it may be. Um, it's, I think for me, my theory is that it's probably based in fear, you know, just being scared of writing a book and nobody reads it. And so if you don't write it, you don't have to deal with that. So I think that's what it is for me, but it, it may not be the same for everyone else. Um, Duchess said she likes the breathing part to open the thoughts. Yeah, it's amazing what uh, oxygen will do for your mind and your body. It's a really, really simple thing that all of us have. You don't have to pay for it. And it makes a huge, huge difference. So highly, highly recommend, you know, there's a, there's a ton of free meditations out there. You can look on YouTube. Um, I will share the one that I have used, but really, even if it's just setting a timer for five minutes and you're just breathing with your eyes closed and relaxing your body, and then you go right, I promise it, it really does make a difference. Okay. Um, so, oh, before we get into inspiration, I do have a few more questions for all of you. So I don't want to send anyone home from this seminar without at least attempting to come up with a schedule if you don't have one. And I also like to say, you know, take this with a grain of salt. I don't know if that's the right expression, but what I mean is that in answering these questions, if it doesn't work out, that's okay. You can always change your goals and change your times that you write, but it's better to attempt it and it doesn't work and we shift and refocus than just say, I'll write when I can. That's the same thing as saying, I'll write when I feel like it. That it's too open-ended. So I there's something to be said for having at least a little bit of uh, of a perimeter, a little bit of uh, rules that we can use as a container for, okay, I'm gonna try to work with this. If it doesn't work, I'll try to do this as opposed to open-ended, abstract, mm, when I feel like it kind of things. So 
the next questions, and if you want, you can absolutely share. Uh, if that you know feel like putting it out into the universe, putting it out to this group, here's what I'm going to attempt to do. The first one is just when do you think you work, you write best? So when do you feel most creative? Or if not most creative, because that might not be a time you can write, when's a time you can write that you think is actually realistic given where you are in life right now? The second question is where do you write best? So some people have to be at home. Some people cannot be at home. Some people like the white noise of a coffee shop. Some people like they can't have any noise. So where is that for you? Is it in your room or maybe the kitchen, coffee shop, library, um, uh, DMV? That would be a weird one, but you never know. Uh, third one, what rituals can you incorporate into your pre or post writing practice? So I think for now, if you don't have any pre is more important because it's going to get you excited and um, ready to step into that headspace. So if you've got nothing, like I said, I mentioned tea, candles, meditating, walking, yoga, maybe you journal for five minutes on what you want to get out of the session, um, a little dance, uh, stretches whatever that may be. Uh, four, what can you commit to over the next week or month in terms of writing? For example, you could say, I commit to writing 100 words a day, 500 words a week, writing for 20 minutes in the a.m. before work, etc." So I periodically, um, depending on what project I'm working on, right now I'm working on a book, so my goal was edit a chapter a week. So that's pretty, there's no word count there per se, but that's what I wanted to get done so I could finish the whole book by September. But maybe for now you want to start small. It could be 50 words a day, 10 words a day. 10 words is better than zero if you're starting at zero. So you don't have to go huge. And then the last one, um, I would like you, if you have a note card or just a scrap piece of paper to write your writing schedule on that note card and put it somewhere in your home where you can see it. So I have on my wall in front of my writing desk, I have lots of notes to myself, but it includes my schedule. So I know, even though I know and I look at it every day, I see that reminder. It's, you know, every day right now, it's every day before before 9 a.m. So it's kind of open-ended. I could wake up at six, probably not gonna happen, but before 9 a.m., I'm going to write 200 words. That's the goal. That's for the week. Weekends, if I write, great. If I don't, that's okay too. But that's what I have set aside right now. So take a couple minutes to answer that. Um, and then we're going to get into inspiration. So talking more about inspiration. And if anyone has questions, feel free to put it in the chat. If you want to share your goals, that's also great. Happy, happy to see what you come up with. Um, and yeah, again, be as honest and open as possible. Okay, thank you for, for sharing, Kimberly. Uh, she wrote, I write best in the morning from 9 to 12 when my coffee kicks in. I write well at coffee shops in my office at home. I definitely love having coffee while I write, maybe a glass of wine after work. Candles. I've been writing 800 words a day, but I write as a copywriter full-time 8 to 5, so that feels achievable. It takes about an hour. That yeah, that is, I mean, a little crazy, but if it works for you, that's all that matters. Uh, thank you for sharing. Um, I also put in the link to the um, to the meditation, if anyone's interested. It's five-minute guided meditation to do before writing, and the website actually is a, it's a pretty good source. It's called Being Lazy and Slowing Down. Be mindful, trust the process, let go of outcomes, which is uh, a good one for artists of all kinds. Uh, at least for me, I often need that reminder to trust the process uh, because, 
you know, it's it writing is hard. Um, Megan said, I never thought of meditating beforehand, though my mind never slows down enough. I tend to write better under pressure, which I don't like. Huh. Yeah, I don't like writing under pressure either. Um, so give it a shot. I think meditating might help you a lot. Um, and if it doesn't, that's okay. You know, you, you know, you miss out on five minutes. I mean, think about what we do for five minutes. I, the things I think about the time that I, I don't like to say wasted time, but anxious thoughts, uh, busy thoughts, it's worth five minutes of just slowing down and trying to be more intentional before the actual writing. Uh, Duchess said, I write best when I first wake. My plan is to write five minutes a day, write on a vacay or plane while my fave chair is the norm. I write before bed for about 15 minutes, but goal is five minutes daily. Easy goal to me. Yes. Very, very achievable. I think that's, that's a great start. Um, I also put in Kurt Vonnegut's greatest writing advice if you want some more from him as well. And yeah, something's got to work. A lot of this is trial and error. Um, so before, when I first started writing, I was uh, just, uh, like I said, I, I write when I feel like it writer. And after seeing uh, how little I wrote, unless I was in the mood, I just decided that I needed to try something else. And once you try one thing that you've never done before, you, for a lot of people, that just kind of snowballs. And now I'm, I'm willing to try anything. So if anyone has tips or things that they do, please feel free uh, to, to share. Someone once told me that they do aerial yoga before they write. Uh, I haven't done that yet, but one day, why not? Um, okay, so let's go into now the inspiration part, and then we're going to do some more creative writing uh, and other fun things. Okay, so share again my screen. Okay. So thinking about inspiration, which is key, that is key for artists, all artists and writers, of course. But how do we find it? Sometimes um, it kind of feels like it's just doom and gloom in the world. Uh, anyone who's been around for the last few years, you, you might know what I'm talking about. So how do we find inspiration? I think there are many ways to do so, and I can only give you some of my tried and true. Um, but I think the ones that I have listed here are pretty, I don't wanna say foolproof because what is foolproof, but they usually work for me. So I hope that they work for you as well. If you uh, are looking for, for new ways to get ideas, to get into the creative flow state, to get writing and get excited about writing, then this is a great place to start. And then we can also share if anyone has other uh, sources, that would be great. Um, so in no particular order, I will say music, and making playlists for my projects is a very uh, fun way to match the sound to the visuals you are creating. So I, before working on my novel, I was working on a memoir um, that is all about my time living in Patagonia. And so I made a playlist of all the songs that I was lis listening to when I lived there, um, Chilean artists that, would transport me to certain moments and places. So I highly recommend that. Uh, making a playlist for a particular project or just a writing playlist. So certain songs get us into certain head spaces. I find, for example, you know, it's hard for me to write if there's a lot of words. Uh, so I will go for um, actually a lot of music in other languages. So I don't know what they're saying, but I still get the music and I get a certain mood. Uh, Philip Glass is another person I like to write to a lot. So it's a fun exercise. It may seem like a distraction, but for me, it puts me in the place where I'm excited to write. So if you think that could work for you, give it a try. Uh, I also really like podcasts and find tons of inspiration, and there are a lot of writing podcasts. 
So one of my favorite episodes that I will put in the chat is called The Source of Creativity, and that's from the TED Radio Hour. And they, in this episode, talk all about creativity and inspiration and how to get into the elusive flow state. So that feeling when you're writing and you just know like it's working, you're, you're there, you're connected, you're not thinking about anything else. The words are coming out, it's making sense and you're excited. We can practice getting into the flow state in quicker ways, uh, easier ways and it just blew my mind. And I listened to this episode over and over and over, and I highly recommend it. Um, nature, as I mentioned before, nature is a huge source of inspiration. So anywhere that I can get away from the city and people being loud and obnoxious, of course, people can be loud and obnoxious outside, but it's not as grating. So that's uh, really great for me. Um, and walking, of course, out in nature. And there's a long history of artists walking to work through problems, to get ideas and inspiration. And especially, I would recommend walk without anything in your ears. So walk and observe and listen. And a lot of times I'll go out there with a scene that I'm working on or an idea or some dialogue, and I kind of write it in my mind. And when I come home, I feel uh, I, ha I have some more ideas or some insight into what needs to change. Uh, reading, as I mentioned, great source of inspiration. Uh, and right now my top sources, I would say, this is constantly changing because I do read a lot, but if you haven't read The Book of Delights by Ross Gay, that's a great book. Um, he, wrote an essayette every day for a year. So a really short essay on things, people, moments that he found delightful. And it's super inspiring. And I return to it often. Uh, Bluets by Maggie Nelson. That's another one that uh, has provided me with a lot of inspiration for uh, her use of language, the poetic language. Um, and then Anything by Toni Morrison, I would say she's a huge inspiration. Uh, and then she, I have a link to uh, some writing advice from her as well, uh, which is, um, you know, reading, reading author interviews. I find inspiration there just to see what do other people who do what I do think and, and how do they get inspired? Um, okay, so those are the, the main ones. Um, anybody just seeing if anyone has any questions or things they want to share in terms of inspiration. Uh, Megan said, I feel like I always think of the best scenes and dialogue when I'm listening to music on the drive to and from work. Of course, I forget most of it by the time I'm able to write anything down. Yeah, that, that could be a really good time then to use the voice memo. If you have those ideas while you're driving, record yourself and say the ideas, and then you can transcribe it later on. Um, any, any questions, anyone else, or anything that they wanna add? Okay, so we're gonna do, we're gonna do a little bit of creative writing now using one of the inspirations or things, something that I often do when I'm stuck with my writing or I just, I'm not sure where to go next or I'm not sure how to start or things aren't working in the story, book, poem, whatever I'm working on. Uh, or I just want to do something kind of kooky and, and you know, just get out of my own way. Um, so what this one's going to be a little interactive um, or sort of very interactive. So if you have, and if you don't, don't worry, we'll figure it out. I'm going to put into the chat what we're going to be doing. So for this, everyone will need to grab a book if possible, if you have a book. If you don't, I have plenty, so don't worry. So grab the first book or magazine if you prefer, or a thing with words, a uh, cookbook, a uh, graphic novel, whatever, uh, and turn to page eight. 
So I'm going to grab one over here. I'll grab a couple or maybe actually I have a couple right here. I don't even need to go anywhere. All right. So I would like everyone to turn to page eight and copy down any line that you like from page eight. So write it, you can write it in your notebook or in a document if you're using Google Docs or Word. Uh, and then if you can, please put that line into the chat. So just one line, one sentence, uh, so that we can all see each other's lines. Okay, we've got some good ones so far. I put in two just to have some options. So we've got, um, today is the day to be honest about the life you have been living, the life you can live and the life you want to live. She gave us permission to make alterations in the flat to suit our taste. Mom's big body booms on the hallway floor, followed by Henry's rushing feet. There's a field invisible and formless that manages it all. And I didn't think even eternity would be long enough to fix me. Carlos also knew Buddy Jack sometimes came around his grandmother's house and was grateful that his grandmother was a good cook and a gracious woman. As his finger traced the trees, hills, and lakes, the pictures rose up from the parchment, standing as tall as his thumbnail. Sometimes I do things without thinking, and back then I did that a lot. In Denmark, I've learned that pickled herring is more popular than Danish pastry. Those legs that kept the silkworms busy. Different dream, same period. Out at a house by the shore, a serious landscape. Words strike him as a ruse, his, ma his maize and beans and squash. All growing things alone disclose the wordless mind of God. I thought the volcano was supposed to be dormant, she said, her brow furrowing. Give us your feedback. Okay. <laughs> I like that. That's a great last line. Give us your feedback. That's perfect. Um, okay. So what we're going to do now, this is a multi-parter door. I want everybody to choose one line. So it doesn't have to be the one that you put in the chat. If you saw another line that you like better, um, I would say go for the one that you feel the most heat. So the one that's most exciting to you that you're just like, huh, what's that about? Or mm, I want to I want to develop this in some way. So choose one of the lines. That's where we'll start. So you could write it down or you can copy and paste and put it in a new document. Okay, uh, once you have done that, we are going to do something that is taken from Brenda Miller, a writer, and I'm just going to put this in the, okay, so from Brenda Miller, she came up with this idea of chaining sentences, so that's what we're going to do to get ourselves into the creative flow state right now. So after you choose a line, you've chosen one of these wonderful lines from the chat, what we're going to do is we're going to make chaining sentences. So that means that the end word of a sentence will become the beginning word of the next. And we'll do that for about five, maybe 10 minutes. Um, so for example, if I was using, just going to do this off the top of my head, so please don't judge me. If I chose the line, Give us your feedback. Thank you, Megan. The next line could be, feedback was all he ever seemed to give.
give him an inch and he'd spit up a foot. I have no idea what that means, but we are tapping into give it with love. There you go. We are tapping into um, our what is called our uh, our subconscious intelligence. So this is a prompt. The goal of this prompt is as our active brain is focusing on these chaining sentences and these rules of, okay, the last word has to then be the first word of the next sentence, your subconscious creative side will be able to play. So again, there's no wrong way to do this. Just see if you can focus on the chaining. And then uh, if anyone wants to share some lines, we can do that afterwards. So I think 10 minutes would be nice just so we have uh, five minutes is a little bit quick to, to be creative and then get out of it. So we're going to write chaining sentence for sentences for 10 minutes. Um, and if anyone has questions, put it in the chat. Okay, so take a couple minutes to wrap up wherever you are. And if you would like to share a line or two in the chat, that would be great. Um, I'm always curious to see what people come up with or if you want to share how that went. And this is a really great door for, you can do it by yourself. Just randomly choose a book anytime you're feeling like you want um, a, a way to get started or to get out of some trouble you're having with a piece of writing is just choose a random line on a random page and do some chaining sentences and see what you come up with. Okay, everyone in the room says that was super fun. That's great. You can feel your creative juices start to flow with this method. Yeah, Brenda Brenda Miller, um, and I forget the other person who wrote the book. She co-wrote it, but if you're interested, it's called uh, Tell It Slant, and I can put that in the chat as well. But she has some um, just different different sorts of of prompts to to get the creativity flowing, as opposed to just write about a character who starts a new job or describe your favorite tree. It just it gets you thinking in a different way and activates uh, lets the um, logical mind focus on the rules while your creative mind can go to some really interesting places that it might not have otherwise. We were so in the Zoom that everyone jumped when the air conditioning clicked on. That's great, that's a really good sign. Um, there's some more, if we have time at the end, uh, I will actually give us a couple of more uh, from Brenda Miller that I really, I, I use all the time um, to, to start writing sessions, to end writing sessions get people out of their shell. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's it's just a, a really, a really interesting way to, to activate that, that creative side. Oh, and Roy's shared some with us. Her brow furrowing words strike her as a ruse. Looking out over the valley, she wondered if she could scamper down before it became too late. In her mind, she kept humming the tune, where have all the flowers gone? There had, to, there had to be a better way to avoid that pesky volcano than standing there looking at the mountains and thinking she could ski. Okay, I. that sounds like it could be part of a novel or a series. It, that could go so many places. So that's that's... Uh, great that something that can come from 10 minutes or less. I, I'm not even sure what is time. So thank you so much for sharing, Roy. That's awesome. Um, so we're going to go over, I've got a couple more things for inspiration, and then um, we'll leave some room for questions or sharing or if, uh, you know, anything else, and then maybe some more writing. So... So this is, I would say, inspiration and writing practice. So I didn't mention before, but what is super important for creating a writing practice and inspiration is having friends who are writers. So when I'm feeling sorry for myself or down on my art or writing in general, 
I reach out to them for words of support or just to vent. I can't believe I got another rejection. I'm never going to be published, whatever else I'm thinking about. And it's really, it's special and it's really comforting to feel, to know that you're understood. And I would say if you don't have writer friends, then now is the time to find one because writing is a relatively solitary act. I do write with other people, um, so it doesn't have to be. But if you don't have anyone who understands what you're going through, Meetup is a great place to start. So if you just go to Meetup, and you look up writing groups, odds are you will find too many, and then you just have to decide which one you want to try out. Um, positive obsessions. So obsession sounds like it's got a you know negative connotation, but according to Octavia E. Butler, one of my favorite writers, uh, she wrote a whole essay, which we will not read because we're running out of time, but I will share the link about positive obsessions. So her positive obsession was writing, as is mine, as is, I'm sure, all of you out there or will soon be. And it's good to have obsessions. So if it's a positive one, it's one that is, it will allow you to be creative, excited, learn new things, connect with other people. The possibilities are endless. So if you are struggling to find inspiration, I would make, I would suggest making a list, uh, start with 10. It's a nice even number, 10 obsessions that you have or could possibly have. So uh, up until, it's funny, up until two weeks ago, I honestly never thought about volcanoes, but I saw a documentary about volcanoes and now I could see myself becoming obsessed with volcanoes. And it's funny that someone wrote about volcanoes and shared a line about volcanoes. So I feel like that's a sign. I should definitely follow that, uh, go down that rabbit hole. So anything that sticks in your mind. So uh, cooking, that's another obsession of mine. Not, I don't like to do it, but I like to read about it. Uh, volcanoes, I got obsessed with movies like how are movies made I want to write about an actress so I have to research that I have to become positively obsessed so that is a great way to find inspiration so you can do that on your own today uh, or tomorrow or next time you don't know what to write think about your obsessions and then choose one and start reading about it and then writing about it um, a way for, so this is for the practice and maybe not so much inspiration, but you never know. Uh, I personally like timers uh, for, for my writing sessions. So I tell myself, you know, in this hour, I'm just going to write and do nothing else. And if I can't write, well, then I'm going to read. And it gives me that that time, that space, I guess a little bit of pressure. Someone was writing about that earlier. Not stress, but just a little bit of pressure. Pressure makes diamonds, right? Sometimes. So having a little bit of the time crunch to know like, okay, time after this hour, I have to go do X, Y, Z. So let's make the most of it. Uh, if an hour is too much, you can try half an hour. You can try 15 minutes, five minutes. Um, but you know, it's one of those things. You don't know if it will work for you until you're tr you try it. Uh, another place I found a lot of inspiration, and this depends on your budget, of course, is uh, weekend or week-long writing workshops or residencies or retreats. Uh, it is a way to give yourself the gift of uninterrupted time just for writing away from family, perhaps, uh, you know, roommates, whatever your situation is. And also I will say, uh, asterisk, that if you can't afford to pay to go to a workshop or a retreat, uh, oftentimes there are scholarships. So I'll share those in the chat as well. For example, Tin House, uh, there they have a lot of workshops, residencies for lots of genres, and they also have a lot of uh, scholarships. So you can apply for that and they have scholarships for uh, parents, for example, teachers, first time authors, all these sorts of things. So even if you don't have the money to spend, that doesn't actually mean that you can't do it. So that's something I learned in grad school was always ask 
if they have scholarships because they usually do. Um, and then uh, I also like to, to say um, that I think writing is like being in a relationship and that's, you know, friendship, family, romantic, whatever. You have to have a vested interest in your, I wrote book because I was thinking about books at the time, but whatever you're writing. So if you don't care about what you're writing about, it's going to be really hard to keep going and to have a practice. So that's really important is you have to care about what you're writing about. And if it's important to you, then it's important. So that comes back to imposter syndrome, you know, thinking, who am I to tell this story? Like, why is my voice important? Is it important to you? Yes. Okay. Then you leave it at that because who is everyone on this shelf, right? They probably thought that at some point. Um, so we just have to work and practice not getting in our own ways and not getting in our heads and reminding ourselves that we have just a much as much of a right and um you know the privilege and we should if it makes you happy and it makes you excited you deserve that so that's something i try to remind myself as well um because it is hard it is hard sometimes to to not have those thoughts and they might not necessarily go away completely but we can at least be aware of what we're doing and not stop ourselves before we even get to try it out and experiment. Um, any questions or thoughts, uh, anything that anyone wanna share in terms of either inspiration or writing practice? Megan said, I found some immersive writing sessions that have timers for sprints and breaks really nice music okay that's awesome if you have them by any chance if you don't mind sharing them that would be great um if anyone has any sources that they want to share um please uh feel free to 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 share the wealth and i'm also going to share here i was speaking about doors earlier so another great source, uh, websites, I didn't put that up there, but there are a ton of writing websites, probably too many. So it's more of an issue of which is good. I really like this one. It's called DIY MFA. So they have um, articles, they have uh, advice, they have, they might actually have um, groups. So if you're looking for a writing group, DIY MFA may be a good source um, but I just put in a blog that I wrote uh, a few months ago called Open Doors in Your Writing. So if you like prompts, if you like having like those, um, what do you call them? Jumping off points, springboards. There are seven in there that I came up with that you can use uh, at any point um, and maybe will help with that uh, inspiration. Um, and the, the idea of the open doors, as I mentioned, comes from Rebecca Solnit, and that leads me to our next door, which is coming from her. So again, I'm going to need some participation. I would love if everyone in the chat could put in, this one's a little bit easier, less time consuming at least, uh, a noun, any noun. So we could all put a noun in the chat. These are great. We've got book, tiger, dog, mother, spoon, monkey, cat, list, bookworm, banana, truck. <laughs> I don't know why the banana makes me laugh. We've definitely got some writers here, bookworms, books. Okay, so we've got about 15 minutes left. So we're gonna do a little bit of uh, writing now and then we'll leave room for, for questions uh, in case we have any or sharing. Um, all right, so here's what we're gonna be doing. So from Rebecca Solnit, she wrote in her book, A Field Guide to Getting Lost, which another great source of inspiration if you haven't read it. She wrote, certainly for artists of all stripes, the unknown, the idea or the form or the tale that has not yet arrived is what must be found. 
It is the job of artists to open doors and invite in prophecies, the unknown, the unfamiliar. So in the spirit of exploration and discovery, I would like everyone here to journal on or perhaps start a new poem, scene, or story, or essay about a time that you or perhaps a fictional character confronted someone or something from this list of nouns in the chat. Uh, this could be based on your own life or you can make it up. Either way, lean into the process that lean into the process and open the door to what must be found without thinking about it making sense or trying to have it be perfect. Lean into the unknown and unfamiliar. So for example, I could write about a character who finds a banana in their truck and they don't know how it got there and just see what comes from that. So I would choose one of the, the ver sorry, the nouns uh, and see what you come up with. If none of the nouns are working for you, then you can just choose a random one or you know what, nobody's gonna know, write whatever you want. So we'll do that for about, let's say seven minutes. So we have a good five minutes at the end to chat, questions, insights, uh, anything else. Okay, if, if anyone wants to share any of their lines or any uh, remaining questions that you might have or insights, anything at all, we do have a few minutes left before it's uh, eight over here. I also, um, I put in the chat a few links. So the I put in the positive obsessions, the link to that essay from Octavia Butler. I also put in, if you're not familiar with poets and writers, that's a great place for inspiration as well. They have weekly prompts. Um, they also have a directory. So if you're looking for that writing community, that's the link that I put in there. And you can find other writers to perhaps write with or share work. Uh, I also put in a link to my book, which is uh, called Words and Wonder, and I've got lots of doors in there and more in-depth writing advice. Um, if anyone is into nature writing or is curious, I'm going to be teaching a class in September with writing workshops, so I put in the link for that. And then finally, I took a break over the summer, but I plan to start up again in the fall um, doing, sending out weekly uh, doors uh, through a newsletter. So if you would like to sign up for that and get a new door every week, usually on Wednesdays, uh, to spark some ideas or writing, you can sign up for that. Anybody? Questions, thoughts, concerns, hopes, dreams? Do we feel more inspired? Are we ready to start writing the, the next great American novel, essays? What's going out there? What's going on out there, Zoom people, Zoom world? I hope you found it helpful and inspiring. Thank you, Kimberly. I appreciate it. Thank you, Erin. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm very, I'm very glad to, to hear that. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's writing is challenging and it's very difficult, but I would not be me if I didn't have writing. So I'm glad that you are all here and that it helped. Um, will the links be sent separately? I don't know. Um, Jennifer, I don't know if you can answer that, the links that we put in the so chat. I've been copying some of the stuff that, that, that Dana has put in the chat and okay. I have been putting it in a Word document. And so I can, I'll, I can email that to the list, to everybody who attended. Um, okay, great. Uh, there's a couple I wasn't able to grab, but I'll get the chat copy mm -hmm. when, I, when I download the, the recording so i'll pull the ones that wouldn't let me was being persnickety and wouldn't let me copy and paste them <laughs> and then i'll email that to everybody uh everybody in the room says thank you as well thank you, <laughs> you're welcome thank you thank you for being here and for I those really... of you yeah so for those of you in the room put your emails address down me so i can send that stuff to you too so 
I want to thank you so much uh, for this, and I hope everybody enjoyed it. Um, uh, Dana did mention her book, Words and Wonder. We do have copies available here at the library for you to check awesome. out. We've also made arrangements with our local independent bookstore, The Dock, that they oh. also have books available to purchase. Awesome. Uh, you can go in the store and, and purchase them, but you can also just order them online from her. Um, yeah. Support so, your support your local library, your local bookstore, your local authors. All, all of us need support. Yes, yes. So I have that information up on the screen. Um, and then we did record this workshop and some others uh, that we've had previously. You can find them on our YouTube channel. Uh, this one will probably take about a week before it gets posted. Um, so if you go to our YouTube channel and you subscribe and turn off notifications, there's a whole playlist just for writing workshops. And then our next big uh, writing workshop uh, with a, an outside preventer will be in November. And we're gonna be talking about the legal aspects of writing, such as the basics of copyright, trademarks, hmm. key provisions and publisher contracts. So keep an eye out on our website calendar for that uh, at fortworthlibrary.org. So thank you very much to everyone. Uh, thanks to Dana for being here with us tonight. We really appreciated it. Have a great evening. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Okay. And thank you everybody who was here tonight.